Does the mic work? Yes, apparently. Okay, so welcome everybody. Thanks you very much for joining us tonight for the second edition of the Sustainability 101 talk. My name is Jean-André and I'm super happy to be with, he, with you here tonight to moderate this session. Before I start, I just want to explain a little bit more about who we are and what is this event. Sustainability 101 is a new series of events that aim to spread key concepts about sustainability in an accessible way for all. First, we assess the current understanding of the key concept in the campus. Then we learn thanks to an expert. And finally, we ask a question to the expert. This series has been jointly organized by the EPFL Unit Tech for Impact and the Student Association GET. The Global Earth Horizon Token Association is a student association that explores how events can help our society to be more sustainable. It aims to spread knowledge through scientific popularization and to create engagement through democratic participation. Okay. Um, Tech for Impact, which is at the Vice Presidency for Innovation, is the EPFL flagship initiative that aims to promote innovation that create positive societal and environmental impact. They worked with students like us, hello, and researcher, entrepreneur, corporate, NGOs on very different projects. Tonight, we will talk about the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals from the United Nations. So we went on the campus and we asked the students if they knew about the SDGs. So we recorded the video and we're gonna play it right now. <rire> Je vois pas trop comment faire et peut-être c'est aussi pour ça qu'on n'y arrive pas. Mmh, ça me dit rien. Pas okay. du tout. Ouais, les SDGs, ouais, vi euh, très vite fait, ouais. Mais peut-être que tu peux m'en dire plus avant que je réponde à ta ouais. question. Yeah, yeah, I've worked with a few SDG goals uh, before. Okay, that was the trailer of the event. Now tonight, we are lucky to have with us the ambassador Christian Frutiger to help us explore this notion of SDGs. The ambassador Christian Fudiger is the assistant director general and head of the global cooperation at the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, the SDC. He has social and humanitarian and development background. He is responsible for five, five global programs which aim to solve global challenges relating to climate change, water, immigration, public health, and food security. He helps fostering the dialogue with multilateral organization and allocating financial contribution. And finally, last but not least, he speaks German, English, French, Spanish, and Russian. So please welcome Ambassador Christian Fruchiga. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Jean-André. Can you hear me? I hope uh, well, so the mic works. Um, very happy to be here and a very warm welcome to, to you all here in the room and uh, those online. Uh, for those in the room, a really big compliment because there is a big competition going on outside, an obstacle race with real snow and people sliding down and, uh, and a lot of good music. You didn't, you didn't notice? It's good you didn't notice, so you came here. <laughs> so uh, really great that, uh, that you made it, uh, that you made it today. Um, we'll we'll um, structure this uh, presentation in, uh, in in sort of yeah, four four or five parts. Um, I'll start with a, a question about the reason why uh, Switzerland is working in international cooperation in uh, international aid in uh, mainly in countries of the of the, of the global south. Uh, then uh, we'll do uh, an overview 
of the 2030 agenda for the sustainable development. And then uh, we look at how we can assess that, how, we, how can we measure uh, sustainable development. There are actually uh, quite a few challenges in there. And then we look at Switzerland, uh, how we implement the SDGs, how we implement them in Switzerland, and also how we work uh, internationally. And then finally, a few, uh, well, a couple of uh, examples um, at the international level and uh, a couple of projects. Um, so, so that was the outline. And uh, now let's go, if that is okay with you, then we will go on uh, with a bit of uh, questions and answers with jean andre and, uh, and finish, of course, with a Q&A uh, from you, because, uh, and I hope by that time you're still awake and uh, can ask the questions. So let's start with a first question. And uh, please take out your mobile phones. Uh, you have the, the QR code or you can go uh, on uh, Slido and uh, look at the question um, and then just type in one word or a couple of words. Why is Switzerland engaging in international cooperation? Why, why do we care? Why is it important that we uh, work uh, with uh, poor countries in the world that we support them. And uh, while you do that, uh, you can also uh, think of the very recent past in which we're still in, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, which doesn't stop at borders. And, uh, you know, why, why are we doing all of this? So we start seeing the results. Just type in what comes uh, through your mind. And uh, Jean-André, you tell me when uh, we can <laughs> continue with the solution. Perfect. If you're still struggling connecting, you just go to slido.com and you enter the number you see on the screen. So 291021. Or you can scan the QR code. see a lot of unique inputs, diversity, sustainability, because Switzerland has money. So if we have money, are we just so easy in giving it away? That an example, create alignment between countries. We work together, prisoner dilemma. Interesting, mutual aid, fear, peace, lead by example, global image, yeah, because there are global problems. Egoism, very interesting to, to hear more about egoism good international relations okay let's go to the next slide and uh, we'll see a few of the reasons why we're doing this um we're doing this for solidarity uh, we're not we're not alone in this world and we're uh, you know uh, global challenges don't stop at borders and we have seen uh, this with the covid 19 uh, pandemic the virus doesn't care uh, whether uh, we're rich or poor. And actually it has hit uh, the, uh, the, the, the richer countries uh, as much, if not more, than the, than the poorer. And this is, uh, this is something which is very new in, 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 modern, in, in modern history. It's not just like Ebola that happened somewhere far away. It happened here. And I think it has raised, raised a lot of uh, awareness. Invest in the future. Uh, we're... This is one planet and we're all on it uh, together. And uh, with climate change, we see that we are uh, affected uh, also here in Switzerland. We see our glaciers melting. We see extreme weather events. Responsible, responsible action. 
global challenges we saw um, on the uh, on the world cloud innovative solutions peace democracy and uh, human rights of course without uh, without peace no democracy without democracy uh, not much uh, often uh, stability uh, without uh, human rights uh, none of the above and definitely uh, no sustainable development and uh, finally uh, of course an international network i saw somewhere egoism and swiss interest if we sort of look at the three criteria on how and why Switzerland is uh, engaging internationally, and this is also in our international uh, cooperation strategy, so the three base criteria, and we're coming uh, back to them. The first one is needs, of course. We're addressing concrete needs in our partner countries and on uh, uh, concrete global problems. The second is the Swiss interest. We have an interest. Uh, Switzerland is benefiting uh, from a, a global economy. We are a rich country. Uh, but uh, a lot of the, the, the wealth uh, is produced uh, elsewhere, and we're uh, benefiting uh, from, uh, from it. Um, we have uh, our, our uh, companies ho hosted in Switzerland, have, uh, have international interests, and we, on our own, uh, have uh, international uh, economic interests. And then the last uh, point is Swiss added value. Where is, where is it we can really make a difference? We are a comparatively small country. Where can we make uh, an impact in the multilateral, the UN system, and uh, in which countries or in which situations, on which topics can we make a difference? So from that, let's move on to the next slide, which uh, seems to be stuck. Okay, sorry. Here we go. Now, from the engagement of Switzerland internationally in international cooperation, why we why we do this? Let's now move to the global agenda, the 2030 agenda um, defined uh, by the UN in 2015. Uh, here, a short uh, movie which uh, shows you how this all came about, and also how Switzerland sees itself within the 2030 agenda. In September 2015, the member states of the UN adopted the 2030 Agenda and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Under this unified agenda, the international community combined the commitments to sustainable development that were made at the UN's Rio Plus 20 conference with the process of renewing the Millennium Development Goals implemented between 2000 and 2015. What's new about the 2030 Agenda is its universal nature. Its 17 goals apply to all member states, not simply the poor countries and the populations of the South. Furthermore, each of these goals must be achieved in a way which respects the three dimensions of sustainable development. Social, economic and environmental. Among the 17 goals that have been identified are those relating to poverty, education, energy, gender equality, environmental conservation, responsible consumption and production, and the fight against climate change. The universal nature of the 2030 Agenda means that each of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals will be implemented differently in different countries. For example, while certain countries continue to struggle with hunger, others should be more concerned with promoting a healthy diet and combating obesity. While Switzerland throws away a third of its food, other countries lose a significant proportion of their harvests because of inadequate storage. And while certain populations are concerned about access to energy, many others consume enormous amounts and need to find a solution to reduce this consumption and its impact on the environment. Switzerland played an important role in the drafting of the 2030 Agenda. For example, it has a particular interest in some of the issues included in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, such as health, gender equality, water and peace. Switzerland is also concerned about some of the cross-cutting aspects which must be considered, such as means of sustainable consumption and production, or reducing disaster risk. 
The 2030 Agenda will therefore impact directly on how Switzerland's international cooperation develops, as it helps to implement the goals at the international level. Nationally, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals will be factored to a greater extent into domestic policy decisions and statements to the Swiss people. Everyone is responsible for putting the 2030 Agenda into practice. Its adoption also marks a shift in the way in which sustainable development is approached and implemented. Individual citizens, civil society, the private sector, the scientific community, the cantons and communes. There are many actors who can pool their skills and interests to make the 17 sustainable development goals a reality. All sources of funding will be important in realizing sustainable development, be they public, private, national or international. The systematic implementation of projects funded in public-private partnerships is one example of how synergies can be created and more money mobilized. By working together we can enable everyone to live a life of dignity. But we must ensure that economic and social development is not achieved at the expense of the environment. It is an approach that is as ambitious as it is promising and one to which Switzerland is committed by adopting the 2030 Agenda and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So. The 2030 Agenda for, 2030 agenda for uh, Sustainable Development, 17 goals, we'll come back to them. Um, they're organized along five dimensions. So we have the people dimension, uh, we have the planet dimension, the peace dimension, and the prosperity dimension. And uh, this can only work uh, if it is done in partnership. 17 goals, 169 targets, uh, about 242 uh, indicators, or 47, it depends, or uh, 232, depending on where uh, you look at, they're evolving uh, as, as uh, the, the SDGs are evolving. So there are ways uh, to measure uh, the uh, realization of uh, these uh, 17 goals. It's a lot, it's a big package, uh, but it is uh, very uh, comprehensive and uh, we can, can all do our part uh, towards it. Implementation principles, universality. So these 17 goals apply to everybody. They were adopted by all uh, member states, all governments, and these governments report on a three to four year basis against progress uh, made against the uh, SDGs. Switzerland's turn is next year. So next year, uh, we will next summer in July at the high level political forum, Switzerland will report on our progress uh, on the SDGs. The second uh, principle is the indivisibility. So the 17 goals come as a package. The realization of one, let's take for example, zero hunger cannot uh, work at the expense of uh, another. Uh, for example, uh, we could take uh, uh, access to health. So zero hunger uh, cannot work at uh, the expense of, uh, of, of, of another of the SDGs. Redu reducing or eliminating poverty cannot work at the expense of uh, the climate, for example, or other natural resources. Partnerships, this can only be done together. Public sector governments, NGOs, civil society, science, academia, and uh, the private sector. So it's a whole of uh, society approach. And then last, but by no means least, leave no one behind. It's a, an agenda for everybody that is supposed to be lifting up uh, the poorest out of poverty. Now, how do we measure sustainable development? Um, development has an impact, economic uh, development, um, is at the heart of, of, of development. The most uh, developed countries are also the ones uh, with uh, the highest incomes uh, per capita, but this often comes at the expense of other things, at the expense of the environment. 
Now, if we look at, at this uh, slightly complex uh, graph, uh, we see the human development index uh, here. So uh, if the pointer works, we see here the human development impact and here uh, see, we see the number of Earth, so the number of planets uh, that, are, that are, would actually be, are actually needed uh, in order uh, to realize um, the human development in the index of these countries. All these dots you see are countries, uh, and you have uh, here in yellow, Africa, and you see that uh, Africa is in general quite low on the human development index, uh, but also very low uh, on the number of planets that are that are needed. So actually, uh, these countries can very well live with our current within our current uh, planetary boundaries. Those countries here, and you see it goes up uh, until until here, actually, in order to sustain their level of, of development and uh, level of well being, they need uh, quite a number of, of, of planets. Uh, in order to sustain this. So this whole thing can't, can't work like this, right? Um, so we have uh, an immense uh, challenge between human development and actually the limits which are given by our planet. Now, let's look at, at this one. Here in Switzerland, what do you think? Where do you think uh, Switzerland was? Which one of these dots uh, was uh, Switzerland? And how many planets do we need uh, to sustain our current way of living? Again, uh, go to Slido. I think, yes, you have to put in your name, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, it doesn't work. Um, and uh, then you should be able to answer the question. Does it work? We have a word cloud with the name, so that's nice as well. We'll see uh, if we have several people with the same name. Just in case it will be the same Slido during all the conference, so you can keep uh, it open. You can keep it open, yes, and you'll see it. You see things pop up. Again, the, the question, if the global population consumed as much as the average person living in Switzerland in 2017. Uh, it's maybe even a bit higher now. Um, how many planets would we need? How many planets are you and me um, consuming if we continue like this? Are we rather on the sort of ecological side? 1.5 planets? It's, it's more, is it more? So is it more than that? Everybody answered. So let's see. You all answered? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was an easy one, right? <laughs> it was an easy one, but it, it shows that there is, uh, there is a lot of room for improvement. And uh, if we go to the, the next slide, you'll see which dot we are um, on this graph. So we're, in terms of human development, almost at the highest level uh, in the world. Um, in terms of ecological footprint, we're at, at 2.8, almost three planets. In the meantime, we're probably at, at three. But we still uh, have quite a way to go uh, in order to come within planetary boundaries uh, with our way of, of, of living. And again, think of Africa. Uh, quantum leap uh, needed, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, in order to, to reach that type you know, of, of development uh, we have without uh, exceeding uh, the planetary boundaries. Planetary boundaries, uh, talking about them, uh, it, there is a certain degree of urgency. Uh, these are the, the different measures of, of planetary boundaries. There are nine uh, indicators uh, for those. For those four have already uh, been exceeded, uh, some of them by far. And then there are uh, some which, uh, you know, we have climate here, uh, climate change exceeding, we have uh, biogeochemical uh, flows, land systems change, freshwater use uh, still seems to be okay, 
uh, today, it's no longer going to be okay tomorrow. Uh, we will exceed planetary boundaries uh, by quite a bit already within the next uh, five to 10 years. So there is an urgency for action. Now, we have, as you've seen, we have our bit to do as Switzerland. Uh, we 2.8, almost three planets are needed uh, currently. So the sustainable development goals are not just somewhere in the global south, in Asia, in Africa, in, 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 in Latin America. Uh, it's also about here. It's what is our impact um, uh, towards sustainable development. Switzerland defined its national strategy towards the SDGs and we uh, decided uh, to focus on three, uh, three big areas. The first one is sustainable consumption and uh, production. So domestic production, but also uh, imported production. Sustainable consumption, that's, a, that's quite an important one. Food waste, we all have fridges. We all have, you know, we all throw away a lot of food. Actually, we throw away in, in the industrialized countries about 30% of the food which uh, comes to us. In uh, uh, the global south, about 30% of the food is actually lost somewhere between the farm and it never reaches a consumer. So post-harvest losses, 30% uh, in, in uh, the global south, in the global north, uh, food waste uh, of not consumed food, about 30%. If food waste was a planet, uh, sorry, if food waste was a country, it would be the third biggest greenhouse gas emitter after China and the US. So whenever you open your fridge, you look at the yogurt, which is past you, maybe uh, just a week or so, um, you can still consume it for a very long time. So open the thing and look, look if it's if it doesn't walk, it's probably still fine to consume. Um, second, climate, energy, uh, biodiversity. Uh, so looking at uh, climate, climate change and the environment, improving our footprint there. The bulk of our uh, uh, environmental footprint is actually taking place somewhere else through imported goods and uh, services. Be that for uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions or uh, uh, be that for water. And then third, equal opportunities and uh, social uh, cohesion. So that's for Switzerland, uh, the three areas we want to focus on. Now at, implement, at the international level, we have our strategy for international uh, cooperation, uh, 21, uh, to 20, uh, 21 to 24. Uh, it's roughly uh, in terms of, of, of money, 2.5 billion Swiss francs uh, per year, which Switzerland invests into uh, development uh, cooperation. Uh, four big pillars, economic development. There is no development without economic development. Every single farmer in an ever so rem remote area, uh, rural area of the world wants to make a living, wants to send their children to school, uh, wants to be able to live a, a decent life. So there is economic development which goes uh, with, uh, uh, with, with human development. Human development, access to basic services, health, education, um, uh, things like uh, uh, things like also access to, to uh, adequate uh, uh, nutrition, access to water, um, uh, very central. Environment, climate impact, environmental impact, and then last uh, but not least, peace and governance. So these are the four uh, big pillars of the strategy of Switzerland's international uh, cooperation. The organization that implements the bulk of it is the uh, Swiss Development Agency, uh, which I uh, represent. It has actually, it's 60 years old this year, so it's not a young organization. Uh, it has its, uh, its history. And uh, here's a, a film, a short film, about uh, how uh, this Swiss Cooperation uh, Development and Cooperation Agency uh, came about and uh, a, bit of, a bit of history. So we implement the strategy uh, together with other Swiss government partners, the State Secretary of the Economy, and uh, also the Human Security Division of uh, Foreign Affairs. But the bulk is being done by the Swiss Development Agency. So here, short movie. In the 
1960s, it was assumed that development aid would reduce poverty by providing technical and economic assistance such as supplying machines and modernizing infrastructure. During this time, Switzerland gained international recognition by implementing a series of innovative development projects. The Swiss Disaster Aid Unit was established in 1973. It quickly became an important institution for Switzerland and earned widespread support from the population. This operational unit of Swiss humanitarian aid consists of a voluntary militia corps with a pool of around 700 operational members. They are deployed during and after conflict or natural disasters to assist the affected population. Established in 1981, the Swiss rescue chain consists of private, public and military organizations whose members are deployed after earthquakes. When in the 1980s the development world realized that preserving natural resources and nature was key for a country's development, sustainability became a focus for Swiss cooperation. During this time, the development sector also realized that the discrimination against women was one of the largest stumbling blocks for sustainable development, economic growth, and poverty reduction. Gender equality became an important criterion when planning development projects. Political upheaval at the end of the 1980s and the beginning of the 1990s led to the creation of 28 new countries with a total population of 429 million people. Switzerland reacted quickly to these political changes and was one of the first countries to provide humanitarian aid to Eastern Europe. Its aim was to alleviate the acute suffering in the countries of the former Eastern Bloc and assist them in their transition to democracy and a market economy. In 2015, the United Nations adopted Agenda 2030, outlining 17 sustainable development goals with a promise to leave no one behind. Switzerland's current international cooperation strategy is in line with the UN's agenda. The knowledge and experience in the field of international cooperation Switzerland has gained over the past 60 years is still in high demand across the globe. So how is the Swiss Development Agency structured? So we go from humanitarian aid in emergencies, uh, you have seen to cooperation in country with Eastern Europe, uh, cooperation in the South, in our priority countries, uh, in country, and then uh, global cooperation, UN, multilateral development banks, and then the, the five uh, global, uh, the five global programs, uh, climate, food security, health, water, and um, migration, which uh, we are uh, working on. Now, just two concrete examples on how we uh, implement things. The first one on water, and here again a short movie. Water is the source of life. It is essential for food production and public health. Water provides us with energy, generates income, and lets nature prosper. While most of us take clean and safe drinking water for granted, roughly one third of all people in the world use a drinking water source that is contaminated or otherwise not acceptable. There are also 2.5 billion people without access to improved sanitation, and of these, one billion have to practice open defecation. Two thirds of these people live in rural communities. At the same time, the water we have is being polluted. In developing countries, up to 90% of wastewater is untreated. Every day, two million tons of sewage and waste are discharged directly into rivers, lakes and coastal zones. If we continue like this, the lack of water will become one of the greatest threats to humankind. In Switzerland, we are blessed with plenty of high-quality water resources, but many of our imported products, in particular food, are highly water-intensive and come from regions where water is scarce. 
In fact, water use beyond our borders accounts for 82% of Switzerland's water footprint. To meet the resulting responsibility, the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation invests about 160 million Swiss francs every year, including 38 million Swiss francs devoted to the Global Programme Water Initiatives to improve global water security. Through these investments, Switzerland and our partners spread innovation and technology. Our cooperation builds on the fact that access to drinking water and sanitation is a human right. We create knowledge, foster partnerships and mobilise political support for equal access to water and sanitation and for good water governance. We also provide technologies for efficient irrigation and informed policy recommendations. Switzerland also engages extensively in water diplomacy to prevent conflicts over shared water resources. There are 263 transboundary lakes and river basins in the world. Many countries have to share their water resources with neighbouring countries. And with ever-growing water demand, competition over water is likely to increase. Our work promotes shared water as a source of cooperation instead of conflict. In addition, extensive knowledge and reliable data are crucial to the effective management of water resources. We therefore support developing countries strengthen their institutions and measurement infrastructures. We also cooperate with the private sector to address risks and to reduce their water consumption. So, can we resolve the challenge of the water crisis? The projections are dire, but the answer is simple. We must and we can. Progress towards global water security helps our economy, our environment and reduces poverty. The costs of inaction are disproportionately higher than the costs of action. And the longer we wait, the more expensive it will get. Switzerland and its partners are committed to addressing the water challenge. Governments, citizens and the private sector can jointly tackle the water crisis and contribute to a water secure world for everyone. So let's go back to Slido and see what uh, you can do. Imagine that you are Amir and you live in Zurich. You could live in Lausanne, but let's say you live in Zurich. Um, and you want to reduce your personal water footprint. So which strategy would be more adapted? Is it take less showers? Is it eat less beef? Which one do you think has the most direct and the most important impact? And if you have a suggestion for how big the impact is, that would be great. You can't put it into Slido, but you can, you can tell me. Okay, are we done? Yes, absolutely. This one was also quite easy. Um, but the difference is actually stunning. Huh? One shower uses about 60, 60 liters of water. It depends on how long you shower. Huh? It's, 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 five, it's a bit more than five minutes. Huh? If you shower for two hours, it doesn't look good. One bath, uh, depending on the size of your bathtub. If you have a jacuzzi, it's a nightmare. It can be up to a thousand liters. If it's a normal bathtub, 150, 200 liters. So quite a, quite a lot. Eat less beef, one hamburger, even produced in Switzerland or in the Netherlands, full hamburger, the full thing, 1,000 liters of water, however you turn it. And of course, if we talk about imported beef from irrigated uh, pastures uh, somewhere else in the world, uh, the, the footprint is even better, it's even bigger. So again, as, in, as you saw in the movie, 80, more than 80% of our water footprint is imported. So think about this when you, when you buy food next time. Uh, and it's about the same for the greenhouse gas emissions. Let's go to the next uh, slide. And just uh, quickly, a couple of examples on, on energy. Um, we have a, a program uh, which is run by, uh, by the Swiss Development Agency and for, and for other uh, federal offices, which is called REPIC. So this is one of our wonderful abbreviations. It stands for Renewable Energy and Resource Efficiency Promotion in International Cooperation. But what it is, it's actually a public-private partnership 
uh, that works on innovation uh, on, on low uh, carbon energy use. Uh, here we have uh, four example, uh, four examples in the pictures, bio, biogas, uh, biogas cooking uh, in the Mekong, uh, reaching about uh, 10,000 uh, households. Um, then uh, we have uh, an example of lights, um, which are actually um, which are actually which are actually powered uh, by uh, uh, sort of a uh, pedal. So it's a it's a it's a human powered uh, battery run system which gives uh, lights for children um, and of course households in Cameroon uh, so that they can study when it gets uh, when it gets dark. It also produce uh, it also uh, gives security for women, for example, who go and, and, and fetch wood. And then the the, the last uh, the last example. Uh, a solar water pump, uh, which is run, uh, which is being rolled out in uh, India. So new technologies, innovative uh, technologies done uh, between uh, between the government, so uh, government agencies in Switzerland and uh, private sector actors and uh, startup for a, a big development impact. Last quiz, last question on Slido again energy use and renewable energies. So who has the larger installed capacity of renewed energy? Is it Europe or is it China? I'll give you a, give you a few moments to decide. Think of all the subsidized solar panels in Germany, for example, or in Austria. You can't change the answers anymore. <laughs> okay, I think we're there. <laughs> no, it's indeed China. China has the, the, the largest uh, in installed renewable energies. Voila. These were easy questions, uh, and but the answers are actually not so not so simple. Sustainable development is a is a challenge where we can do a number of things from here on our own, and uh, you know starting with reducing food waste, starting with looking at what products we buy, um, and then uh, of course continuing with the actions we can undertake in our also professional lives and. You here, you know, you're at uh, in a in a hub for innovation and in a hub for you know creating a new a new future. So this new future is not just about making as much money as possible, and I hope it definitely is not about just making as much money as possible, but it's about having a positive impact with what you do through your private activities where you vote as a consumer, you buy the products which are sustainable or you don't, this is your choice, uh, or with how you choose your professional pathway and what it is you want to work on as future engineers, as uh, future maybe marketeers, some change the profession, or maybe as future Nobel Prize winners, who knows? So thanks a lot. Uh, with that, back to, back to you, Jean-André. Yeah, actually, thanks to you for this presentation. Now I would like to invite you to come with me on, a, on the chair for some questions. Okay, please sit there so you can yeah. have a quick look to the, the screen. Okay, so thanks for the presentation. Um, a first question when we saw all these different SDGs that come in mind is, okay, they seem incredible, but are they really achievable by 2030? It's in less than 10 years now. So we ask some um, students uh, if they think this is really achievable. And so we're gonna watch together their answer. In the... Je pense qu'ils vont être très durs à atteindre. Bah, on espère peut-être l'égalité des genres. 
je, je suis en cours du climat ici et globalement, euh, ça, niveau climat, c'est sûr que c'est mort. Je suis pas sûr que ce soit possible qu'on les réalise. Quoi. I mean, I think it's definitely achievable because it feels like everything could change so fast, depending on if countries and nations are willing to like work together. Because if everyone's willing to work together, then it can change very quickly. L'éducation, ouais, ok. Il y a peut-être juste certaines qui me paraissent être très difficiles à mettre en place de manière durable. Par exemple, l'égalité de genre. C'est-à-dire que comment on met en place l'égalité de genre dans des pays dont ce n'est pas les valeurs Si on arrive à l'imposer dans 10 ans, par des mesures coercitives, supposons qu'ensuite ces mesures coercitives disparaissent, qu'est-ce qui va se passer Ok, so you see, students are wondering, you personally, do you think it's really achievable in less than 10 years And um, how do you make sure, in fact, that the states keep their promise Is there any metrics to see the progress? You talked about sums. And would it be possible to constrain them to act if the metrics are not fulfilled? So I, well, do I think uh, they're achievable? Maybe not all of them, but uh, at least they give us a direction. Mm -hmm. If you have no goal, it's really difficult to, to, to know where we're going. Now we have these goals. Uh, they are stretch goals. And uh, we, have to, we have to try to achieve as many as, as, as possible. In Switzerland, we have, have made a lot of progress last weekend on, on gender equality. So, you know, it's, it, it is moving. It's more difficult in other places. Uh, yes, Afghanistan has just taken a big step backward. Um, but there again, you know, we have, to, we have to continue to work on this as individuals and as, as governments. Now, are there coercitive measures Of course, the international community has the, has the option to, you know, to, to you know, put sanctions on, 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 on uh, governments that don't uh, move forward. Now, like with, with people, uh, you know, incentives um, or sort of public discussions tend to often work better than sanctions. So all countries have to report um, on, a, on a three to four year basis on their progress in public at the UN. Okay. Uh, and and this, is, this is already a, a, good, a good mechanism. But then of course measures can be, can be taken uh, by individuals and also by, by, by groups uh, of, of, of organizations, NGOs, uh, companies uh, to, uh, to, to help, uh, help this progress uh, be, be made. So we can all do something about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you. And um, 17 SDGs? It's a lot, but at the same time, we wonder how can we, can we solve all the problem of the world with only 17 SDGs. So we asked to the student, can you imagine one SDG that is not present? What would you add as a new SDG? And so we can think, look at the other video. Il n'y a pas assez de solidarité. Euh, solidarité ici, pas dans le sens de pouvoir s'entraider mais de pouvoir partager ce que nous avons en commun. Quand nous buvons le café, nous devons penser à ceux qui produisent les cafés que nous voulons boire. Et les technologies aujourd'hui permettent de pouvoir partager la valeur de l'objet que nous consommons ici avec les gens qui l'ont produit très loin ailleurs. Et ça permettrait de, 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 de réduire un petit peu la pauvreté. Ça réduirait aussi le besoin de pouvoir, euh, je dirais, euh, dévaster des grandes zones euh, forestière pour obtenir des miettes à la fin. Donc euh, moi je pense qu'un objectif ce serait de développer une économie durable d'un point de vue social et puis euh, environnemental. Le respect de certaines ressources, on va dire au niveau national, par exemple mettre des mesures en place économiquement pour que Coca-Cola puisse plus acheter euh, des nappes phréatiques au Mexique. Euh. Ok, what do you think about these new SDGs Well, maybe the last one is, is kind of already integrated in, in a number of the, of the SDGs, you know, water, climate, uh, life on land, uh, life in, in the ocean. So I think resource uh, utilization is, is already in there. I, I like solidarity a lot. Uh, it's a bit in the partnerships, but this notion of, of, of solidarity is, is one which um, is we're very good at talking about. Mm -hmm. The doing bit is much more difficult. And uh, I think it's, it's something we, we definitely should be focusing on. And then sustainable economies. Uh, sustainable, sustainable economy is, is, is really, uh, can be a real driver uh, for, for sustainability and for sustainable development. And, you know, Switzerland, uh, important uh, economical hub, mm -hmm. uh, an important plus financière. Mm -hmm. If Switzerland could be 
the front runner of sustainable investment and uh, you know sustainable uh, sustainable banking uh, and a sustainable financial sector that will be a, a, that would have a huge impact uh, way beyond our borders yeah and exactly on this point on the sustainable economy one criticism that is often made to the sdgs is that they do not question our capitalist economic model the paradigm that we need economic growth so and some people think that this, this is precisely what led to the social and ecological crisis we live. So what would you answer to this criticism? I'm personally convinced, and uh, you know, this is why I've, I've moved from sort of the NGO sector to humanitarian work. Then I did uh, almost 13 years in the private, in the private sector, mm -hmm. and I'm now you know, working in, in development cooperation. I'm, co I'm convinced that these two things go together. Uh, the future, I mean, if we want to solve this problem of uh, multiple planets, us using the resources of multiple planets, and with, for us, all of us having a decent living on this yeah. one planet we have, there is no other way than uh, a sustainable economy, which means that, you know, economic activities uh, have to have, uh, ideally, uh, a positive impact, social and environmental impact, at the minimum, no negative uh, such impact. So we have to change the, the, the paradigm. Mm -hmm. And the moment sustainability becomes profitable, it will go much faster. Of course, the poorest uh, of the poor in every single country, this is also the case here in Switzerland, will uh, need uh, uh, assistance, will need, will need aid. But if as many as possible can make a, a decent living on their own, uh, we've, gone a, we've gone a long way. Within planetary boundaries, huh? let's not forget that there, there are limits to what we can do. Okay, so I hear constrain the economy, at least it respect the planetary boundaries. Okay, thank you. Um, now, I would like to ask you directly, as an ambassador, you were involved in a lot of projects, in a lot of discussion. What is your favorite memories, the memories that, that give you hopes for the future and for the achievement of the SDGs? We were talking about solidarity and, and mm -hmm. when what comes to mind in the last in the last two years is, you know, we've had this COVID-19 crisis has hit Switzerland uh, in an unprecedented way. Uh, we would never have thought that we would uh, not go to university or the APFL for uh, one and a half years, that we would, you know, have to wear masks and, and you know, the hospitals would be full and, 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 and overwhelmed. Um, it's it's cost Switzerland a lot of money to uh, sustain its economy, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, the government, the federal council and the parliament approved two additional credits for 400 million and for 300 million, so 700 million Swiss francs, uh, in order to help uh, to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic in the global south. Mm -hmm. So that, and there was no problem, and this went through really very easily. And for me, is this is the sign of solidarity, and, and you know, the, there is, no one is safe until everyone's safe. So that this is what the, the head of the World Health Organization uh, uses. And in reality, no one can prosper until everyone can prosper because there, there needs to be a rebalance of, 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 uh, of this richness actually uh, in the world. And I, I'm confident, at least I hope, uh, that we get much closer to that very soon. I hear a lot the reduction of inequalities in your... Absolutely. Yes. Okay, and uh, maybe final question, at least for me. Here we are at PFL. We are a school of engineers, architects. Just next to us, there is UNIL. Um, what do you think is the role of the architects and the engineers for achieving the sustainable goals? And what would be your one advice that you leave us as a student or as an EPFL staff to start with achieving the, the sustainable goals? Look, engineers and architects can be at the heart of sustainability or they can be at the heart of destruction. Uh, remember that uh, a lot of uh, technological achievements were actually made in, in, in warfare and, and, and international conflicts. So your choice. Um, if you, I would rather see you uh, at the heart of uh, sustainability and you can, you can have an impact. Uh, you, every single one of you can have an impact in the choices you make, uh, the technologies you develop, that they correspond to actual real needs of people. Um, so it's not technology for technology, so it's technology for people, 
and for their needs and ideal, ideally, in my view, for uh, you know, the poorest or those with the, with, the, with the biggest need. And you can make a big, a big difference. So not only in what you buy, how you vote, but also the professional environment you choose and also in the dialogue uh, with, uh, your, uh, with your school or your university or your polytechnic and in the choice they're making. You have much more power than you think. Use it. Okay, thank you for this message. Now I would like to open the question to the public. Uh, there is some mics in the room. You can just raise your hand if you want to ask a question and we'll give you the mic. We already have one. And also, uh, if, you're on, if you're on YouTube, you can just type the question on the YouTube chat and someone will read it to our speaker. Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would have two questions, uh, but if we don't have any, enough time, you can just pick up the one you prefer. Um, the first one would be, um, there's a lot of examples where SDGs are like in oppositions. Um, how do you deal with that? And my second uh, question would be, um, do you have critics uh, based on neocolonialism? And if yes, uh, what is your guess? On that so uh, yes some of these sdgs might be in in, in um in might look as if they were in competition this is why it have to be looked at as a as a package so the progress on one sdg cannot have a negative impact on another so that's 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 one of the challenges we're we're, we're facing but it's it's the only way to uh, to go forward um uh, neocolonialism yes it's a it's a criticism uh, that sometimes can be can be heard um, and this is why, and you sort of saw the, the, uh, the video of uh, the Swiss Development Agency and how, is, how it has evolved. So it has really moved from, you know, working for uh, sustainable development in our partner countries uh, to working with our partner countries, the local communities on the ground to find solutions and to look at innovation there. This is also a lesson for, for you guys here. Innovation doesn't only happen here on, on campus. A lot of innovation happens in Africa with absolutely spectacular ways to solve huge problems, which are real there on the ground. So I think there is a, there, there is, there, there is, has been a shift uh, in development cooperation, an important one, which has to continue. Okay, thanks for the question. There is a second one here in the middle of the room. Thank you. Good evening. I feel like an intruder here because I'm basically an external person coming here because I, I just bumped into the website a few days ago. And I was curious about to hear about SDGs because I've been working on SDG3. But my question is really as a citizen. And uh, what can a normal citizen do vis-a-vis -vis all these, uh, all these uh, goals? Because you've briefly mentioned, well, eat the yogurt before it walks outside the fridge by itself. <laughs> but uh, um, if I hadn't been working in, on SDG3, I wouldn't have been knowing really what all that is about. And, uh, and uh, my question is, how can we educate uh, the, really the public, even in, in, actually in developed countries, to either consume less or consume better? Thank you. Thanks. It's an excellent question because it's complex. I mean, the 17 SDGs are complex. And this is why for the, the, the national strategy in Switzerland, we decided on, to focus on these three areas, on, on sustainable consumption and production. This is somebody, something everybody can do. Uh, then look at the in, environmental uh, impact and resource utilization. This is also something we all can do, taking public transport. Uh, you know, looking at uh, looking at electric vehicles versus uh, big uh, uh, combustive uh, engines, provided that, of course, we have uh, then the uh, the uh, renewable uh, electricity in the, in those vehicles, and the batteries are um, you know recycled properly, and that we actually drive them. Uh, an electric vehicle in a garage is 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 has a negative environmental impact. Um, and then, of course, uh, the last one, uh, equity. Um, gender and, and gender equality um, and, and, and social, social cohesion. So we can, there are things we can do. And this is why we simplified that for Switzerland. If we already do that in Switzerland, uh, we've, gone a long, we've gone a long way. For those like you who want to go beyond, 
there, there, there are opportunities uh, for everyone in their field of activity. You mentioned SDG, SDG three. Uh, right now, uh, of course, uh, a, a huge, uh, a, a huge challenge. Uh, the negative impact of this health pandemic has not only been on SDG three, uh, but what we what we also see is that hunger is going up again in an unprecedented in an unprecedented way, and we may soon face again uh, hunger crises in a, in a number of countries, uh, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. It's already there, uh, and it's 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 coming at, and it's been enhanced now by, by by the health crisis. So we can all do our bit. We don't have to do. They're all interconnected, but we don't have to do the whole lot. The only thing we have to make sure is that uh, if we if we turn one wheel, that we don't damage uh, an, another one. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we can go deeper on the question of the education. How do you actually touch citizens that may not know for now the SDGs? How can you do a, a popular and a citizen education on these issues? What would be your guess? Oh, we're we're working on it, but um, as you see, uh, myself, uh, we're we're not particularly young people, so we also uh, we also uh, need uh, you guys uh, to actually look at this uh, this type of event, uh, the discussions you have amongst uh, amongst yourself, uh, the mobilization, uh, be that on climate, uh, be that on social impact. Uh, be that on gender equality, in social media, on campuses, it's, it's, it's hugely important. And again, you have much more power than you, than you think. I'm not telling you to go and demonstrate, but this is what we did when we were younger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Is there another question? Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask because uh, what are big parts of the problems here uh, about SDGs or whatever, well, climate crisis, for example, is like a big, big part of the problem of the, it's the private sector. So I wonder how uh, the, the countries themselves, which are not much more uh, wealthy than some big companies can actually uh, force or, or have a an impact on the companies that are located on their, well, their own country to have a, a, a true change. I mean, because a lot of the private sector just don't care because they don't have anything that just telling them th themselves to, um, to take action and they have the money. So what they can do whatever they want. So what can a country do to make the companies do something really? Uh, yeah, that's an that's an important point. I mean, there is there is not only there are not only single countries and and big companies. There is a, an international community of states that actually has the task to uh, ensure that uh, you know the the basic uh, human rights uh, are respected uh, in in every in every single one of the of the countries. Uh, now, companies, uh, multinational multinational companies, uh, are active in other places of the world as well. And uh, here again, uh, you 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 see that uh, the moment, um, and this is why I was talking so much about financial markets. If we talk about stock-listed companies, uh, for example, um, hugely energy-intensive sectors have come under major pressure, and uh, you you see when. Uh, when investors start turning away from uh, certain companies, that has a huge uh, that has a huge impact. Now, who are the investors? Uh, the investors are often pension funds. Uh, these are organizations we all uh, are uh, affiliated to and over uh, whom we have a certain uh, have a certain leverage. Um, but then, of course, you have governments that uh, set the framework uh, for uh, the behavior. Of, company, of companies in, in their markets domestically and internationally. We've had the vote here uh, not so long ago, long ago um, on uh, responsible, uh, uh, responsible uh, multinationals. Um, there, it, was, it was narrowly uh, refused, but uh, there is a, an indirect counter proposal which already strengthens also uh, the, the obligations on, on, on companies to ensure they have no, no negative impact. 
this imbalance of power is, is something which is not only between uh, companies and, and, and countries with weak governance. And this is one of the reasons why we also, Switzerland, work in strengthening uh, the, 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 the governance. Uh, it's also a challenge between, between countries. So there are different, different levers. Another lever is the multilateral, uh, the multilateral system, the UN and the World Bank system that invests in strengthening uh, the governance uh, of uh, these different countries also on the ground uh, so they can actually have the necessary legislation and then implement and enforce the legislation. That's also one of the challenges we have in, in, in many countries. So there are no, no magic uh, solutions, but it's a, a combination of measures that, uh, that, that have to work together. Okay, interesting. I think we still have time for two last questions. Perfect. Okay, thank you for the interesting and interactive presentation. Um, I'd like to ask you how you see a transition from a linear economy to a circular economy as part of addressing the SDGs. That's an excellent point. The, and and this, is, this is where also you guys come in. No? Um, I think it's a must, um, but we probably have to break it down into, into pieces that, that, that can be more easily absorbed and, and, and understood. Um, last week, uh, we had, there was the, the UN um, food systems, sustainable food systems summit, so looking at the food system as a whole. But if you take food systems, you can actually break them down. So you look at, at uh, food systems around a city. Right? You can take the city of Lausanne and its surrounding ecosystem. And there you can, you can then look at, at a circular economy of food within uh, uh, an urban and peri-urban system and it becomes much more uh, tangible so you can do that for Lausanne but you can do it for Kinshasa uh, uh, you can do it you can do it for any for any uh, city city in the world and uh, yes it's definitely a way a way uh, a, a way forward but all the way into regenerative agriculture but it also uh, you look don't look look only at the production you look at the at the, the, the transformation, the consumption, health uh, of, 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 because hunger is one problem, overweight and obesity is, is, is almost an even bigger problem uh, in the world. So you look at, 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 at healthy, healthy consumption, and then of course, uh, the whole regen regeneration uh, mechanism. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We actually have a question from the online audience. Okay. Um, which I don't know if it's a professor actually. Would SDC be interested to construct an education program with EPFL in order to teach about SDG implementation and engineering solutions towards these? Oh, that sounds like a funding request. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I don't know. There is potential in this, but uh, you know, send me a comp. Send me a concept paper. Okay, we'll tell the, the person online. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for this question. Uh, still have time for one last question in the room. Yep. Thank you. Um, so I was wondering, um, when we look nowadays to uh, companies, uh, sustainability initiatives, they usually just pick four or five SDGs, which they like a lot. And then they say, okay, let's improve these four or five. Um, but as you said before, we should not leave anyone behind. And we have to look at the whole picture of the SDGs. So I was wondering, um, in general, what can we do to avoid these in, uh, just besides uh, social pressure as consumers and everything? Uh, maybe also, um, it, uh, uh, do you at the SDC prevent that or do you engage in actually uh, conversations with conver uh, companies or what do you do uh, to help them to understand better the SDGs and the meaning of them? Uh, absolutely, we do that uh, together with the State Secretariat for, uh, for the Economy uh, to work on, uh, on responsible business practices on how to improve, for example, their water footprint or their, their climate uh, footprint. And then um, also looking at, at human rights issues, you know, do no harm, uh, uh, going all the way from a, a negative social impact 
towards a positive uh, towards a positive impact. So the baseline for a for any company should be um, on if looking at all the SDGs have no negative impact. So do no harm is the starting point. And then where uh, where there where your core business overlays with um, with uh, particular SDGs, uh, you know, move forward into uh, generating a positive a positive impact for as many people as possible. So that's that's the vision. Um, it's it's not it's not a, a, an easy one, uh, but uh, the hope is, and and this is what we are working on, is to making is to make this more and more mainstream. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I think we can applaud you one more time. Actually, we have a very special gift for you. Here at PSL, we have a local grocery shop that is selling only local products and uh, without packaging. So here's it for you, some local product near Lausanne. It's here, it's called Le Voras, just at the Vortex on the campus of EPFL. And then, well, I would like to take to, to thanks Gates Association. I would like to thanks Take for Impact Unit and especially you, the people that came and also the people that are on YouTube right now. There are quite a lot. Um, this video was recorded, so you can find it back on our YouTube channel and it will be also uploaded on the Tech for Impact YouTube channel. And also uh, to be notified, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And yeah, thank you. And for us to be aware of the next event. Thank you very much. Yeah, and now.